Being a mother and seeing my son, I always ask myself, how could I tell my son to follow his dreams or to believe in himself if I don't believe in myself and if I don't follow my dreams? Mm -hmm. For me, it was very important the example that I was giving him. And in order for me to be that person that I wanted him to be, I had to become that person first. Sure. And that is the reason why every time that I wanted to give up, I will tell myself, he's watching me, he's watching me. Yeah, there you go mm -hmm. from the outside looking in again. <laughs>
my school. I, I wanted to to be part of the band. I wanted to be part of the group, but I was not allowed to because my grades were not good enough for me to be in the band. Uh, but that was that was my school. That was my comfort zone. I, I really love studying in Mexico. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So the band, you um, did you have aspirations to be a musician when you grew up, or what did you think you might be when you grew up? I wasn't sure, but I remember that when I was in, in Mexico, when I was in school, there was a time when the teacher asked for a volunteer to memorize a poem for Mother's Day. And I immediately lifted my hand really? and yes. Okay. Um, and no was one else. Was it because you loved your mother so much or was it because you just wanted to stand in front of the crowd? I think it was more because I wanted to get my mom's attention. Oh. Uh, because in my culture, the man is always the one that receives all the attention and my mother always give all the attention to my brother and somehow I wanted her to, to see, hey, I'm also doing something. Mm. Um, and that was the main reason at first. But also, I always admire people that had the ability to speak in public. Uh, every time that I saw a professor speaking in public, for me, it was it was something that I admire, but never aspire to be like that because I thought that that I couldn't do it. Yeah. For me, it was like every time that I, that I will ask, people will tell me, "Well, you have to have good grades to be able to do that, and you don't have good grades." To be able to do what? Just <laughs> to, to be able to public. stand and speak in public? Yes, you have to yes. have good grades? Because even for everything, huh? For everything. Because even when I volunteer, the teacher asked the question three times. No one else was raising their hands. Mm -hmm. And then she looked at me and she said, are you sure you can memorize it? Oh, so <laughs> she, was, she was doubting you and yeah. hoping somebody else would raise their hands. Yes. Okay. But that's the good thing about me because when someone doubts something that I want to do, it gives me like that extra power to prove them wrong. That's right. And in that moment, I made it my mission to memorize the entire poem. There you go. And I did. How did it go? It went, good. It went great, yes. Yeah. Um, what I didn't know is the feeling that you get when you're up on, on stage. Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea the way mm. that you, it was. I remember my hands were shaking like this. And, sure. and I thought that my heart was going to like, get out of my chest <laughs> that was the first time that I had a sensation like then wow that's mm -hmm. awesome <laughs> yes. and, and, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more because I know that's uh where your world has come to yes. where you're not you're dealing with that all the time you're speaking but um you figured out how to deal with those nerves yes so but just for a little bit of foreshadowing I'm interested um what's the trick like have you figured out that that quote unquote anxiety is actually positive energy. It means that you care and you and you use it, you know, towards the crowd. How do, how do you deal with it? Well, at first, I thought that eventually the anxiety or the feeling that you have before going up on stage was going to eventually subside. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. It's mm -hmm. always there. And what I learned is that it's not about me. It's about the message and the person that I'll be speaking to. Mm -hmm. So when I center myself and I tell myself, someone out there needs to hear this message, yeah. it's like if you go with a different feeling, like you feel empowered. And, and many times my family members, when they see me going up on stage, it's like if I'm going with a lot of determination yeah. and they're like, wow, it, it, it seems like you transform yeah. yourself into a different person. And Beautiful. that that's what I learned uh, to do now that I, I always tell myself this is this message is for someone else. Beautiful. OK, so you mm -hmm. move from TJ to Oceanside. Yes. <laughs> OK, so then what's that transition like? You Like you said, you didn't speak English. Yeah. Um, there are Spanish speaking people in Oceanside, of yes. course, when you moved in. But at the same time, like you're trying to get involved and engulfed in the culture. Mm -hmm. How how was that for you? Well, initially, when I started school again, I wasn't doing good in school mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to speak English. I was in the ELD program. So you were in the program. I was I've in, heard of yes. and I'm only interrupting <laughs> you because I've actually heard of people being immersed in like you don't even get to get in the program. Even though you don't speak English, we're just going to drop you in the English classes yeah. and you figure it out. And so it's forced on you. It, but at it least is. you had a program where it was a little bit of a transition. It was half and half. The ELD program is for English uh, learning students. And so most of the students in that classroom speak Spanish, mm -hmm. but the teachers speak English. And mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. they, they, they want to put you in a situation where you have to learn. Mm -hmm. But since you're surrounded by other people that only speak Spanish, you tend to goof around 
Um, uh, people, I remember that in my classes, they will put us a movie and then they will leave, let us just be. So it was not like... Well, they don't set you up for success. <laughs> no, no, they don't set you up for success or there's no role models. There's no one that will come and tell you, hey, you can get a career. Um, and I eventually started seeing how a lot of my classmates started dropping out of, of high school in their freshman year, their sophomore year. Um, I, I, never, I never aspired to go to college. I never aspired to get a ed higher education. Mm -hmm. um, but my parents always told us, my parents thought that the highest level of education was high school. And for them, their biggest goal was for their kids to get a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. um, so every time that I will go home and I will tell my parents, oh, I'm not doing good in school, they will tell me, uh, you need to get your high school diploma. Just it's graduate. very important. Yes. Yeah. But just graduated, even if that's it, then that's fine. Yeah. Well, because they didn't know that there was more. Right. My parents never had the opportunity to go to school. They don't know how to read or write. They thought that the highest level of education was a high school. Mm -hmm. And that was because no one in their family ever got a formal education. Uh, we, we come from a culture where women were not allowed to go to school or the parents didn't have the money to send their kids to school. We came into an environment, to a community where most of my neighbors were farm workers True. or working class. Yeah. Uh, we never saw a person that was educated among us. Couples Unfiltered, the podcast where we have intricate conversations with very interesting couples from all walks of life. We delve into the profound difficulties these couples have faced and how they've overcome despite. These are genuine couples with genuine stories and we're so excited to be able to share their wealth of knowledge with you. That's Couples Unfiltered. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is brought to you by yourinsuranceplace.com. Owning a business is hard work. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into it every single day. You need a partner who understands the ins and outs of insuring small to medium-sized businesses. For over 40 years, our California Property and Casualty Insurance Agency has insured businesses just like yours. We've seen it all and we've learned a thing or two about what it takes to keep your business protected. That's why we offer free policy assessments. We'll take a look at your policy and let you know if there are any gaps in your coverage. Let us help you to protect what you've worked so hard to build. Yourinsuranceplace.com. I love what you're saying, and, and I'd actually ask you for a little commentary just because of, um, you know, just what you mentioned about the ELD courses yes. and all. Now you combine the ELD, ESL, and you look at um, the family structure mm -hmm. and what the family believes about, you know, males versus females and all yes. of that combined. That's what we call systemic, mm -hmm. right? And so there's nobody trying to get you to a higher level. No one. And that's how you wind up. Like you said, you have peers that dropped out of school because mm -hmm. there's nobody really mm -hmm. elevating you, even though they may have had potential. Yes. Right. And so I'm so happy that you broke through that. Yes. I'm so proud of you. And <laughs> it's so you. special. Right. Not that you need me to be proud of you. You did it. <laughs> but um, I, it's like, what do you think? What's your commentary on those programs and how can they be improved? I think that the what I realize is that not having a role model makes it difficult for you to see yourself uh, in, in a place where you have never seen someone that looks like you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what will help those programs is that if there's a role model, someone that was an ELD student, a professional that was able to make it, if they could go back to those places and speak to those students because mm -hmm. they have to be able to see their future self. You're right. It's hard to believe that you can do something if you have never seen it and no one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with you. Um, that giving back, going mm -hmm. back, reaching back, as we yes. say, and bringing uh, your folks forward. But the onus shouldn't, I don't think the onus should be all on our own selves. Yes. I do think that the programs have to be recalibrated, in yes. my opinion, in order to realize that and then maybe even go find those people and involve them and incorporate them into the program. Yes. But that's my comment too. No, and I agree with you because something that I, I always tell teachers when I visit them is that you have to believe in your students so that they can believe in themselves. 
if you don't believe in them, if you just put a movie for them to watch, if you just go to work just uh, to get a paycheck, if you don't, if you truly don't put your heart in it, mm. they will not be able to see the potential that they have. Mm -hmm. And th that is very important because the reason why I was able to make it this far is because Mr. Lee, my teacher, saw something in me that I couldn't see. Mm -hmm. Shout out, Mr. Lee. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So now we're getting further into education, right? You're in um, middle school, high school. Yes. How's that going for you? Are you doing better with your education, your grades? I know you said that, you know, you weren't at the top of the class or anything yeah. like that, but you're still pushing through. And then you've got the family who was just saying, just graduate. Like, yes. are you, how is that going? How's that process going? I was 15 years old when I found out that I was pregnant mm. and I dropped out of high school. Mm. I moved to Fresno to live with my baby's father and I lived through domestic abuse for two years, almost three. Uh, school was no longer in my plans. My only goal at that time was to be a good wife and to do everything that I learned from my grandma, from my aunts, from my cousins, that I had to be there no matter what, yeah. no matter, yes. Uh, but everything changed the night that my baby's father forced me and my baby to sleep outside the house. That is the night that I realized that if I wanted my life to change, I had to change. And in that moment, I, I remember um, um, when I was outside crying with my baby and feeling so sorry for myself. That night, I remember a memory. And that memory was of a summer when my mother took me to work with her in the tomato fields. And she told me, if you want a better life, you need to get an education. And that is the night that I promised my nine month baby that I was going back to school and that I was going to make him feel proud. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's an amazing story. You know, because you're going through so much at that time, right? Yes. You're outside. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just trying to survive. You're figuring out, like, I'm going to get through the night, but yet and still, you're finding answers yes you know what i'm saying you're being enlightened mm -hmm. you're like you know what yeah i gotta change this has to change we're gonna change and we're gonna start immediately yes. Yes. okay so how do you get away from that situation i enrolled in a charter school and that's where i met mr lee okay. uh, i enrolled in a homeschool program and i ended that abusive relationship as soon as i graduated from high school when when I was in my last semester of high school, Mr. Lee asked me, Miss Erica, are you planning to go to college? And I remember asking him, Mr. Lee, can someone like me go to college? And that's the moment when Mr. Lee said, yes. And then he looked straight into my eyes and said, Miss Erica, promise me that you're going to college. Mm -hmm. That day I walked out of his classroom with a new goal and my new goal was to go to college. Mm -hmm. I ended the abusive relationship and I moved back to Oceanside with my parents. Okay. Yes. Nice. Okay. So you moved to Oceanside with your parents. You go to school. Now, uh, your parents, they, they had been involved a little bit throughout this process? No, or no? no they, they, they were not involved. And the reason is they were going through a difficult uh, situation financially. Mm -hmm. So they were living in Tijuana, Mexico, while all of this was happening to me. No. And every time that they will call me, like they, they will call me once a week, I will tell them, oh, everything's good. Everything's okay. I didn't want it to complain or, or like... I didn't want my parents to say, hey, I told you, or you should have done this. Um, so I decided to keep it to myself. But when I finally told them the situation and I decided to end that relationship, my parents uh, rented a small one bedroom apartment. My sister was still in high school. So when I came back, I, I just came back with a little backpack, two sets of clothes, my little sandals and my baby. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember that my mom told me, look, uh, we cannot help you financially. You will sleep on the side of the sofa right here with your baby, but you have to figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. And and then that that's that's how everything started. But you were accepting of that. It was still a better situation than what you were in. Oh, yes, yes. It was a way better situation, but I was terrified. Yeah. I, I remember that that Erica was questioning her decision, was questioning the fact that uh, I thought that I was a horrible mother because I left my son without a father. Mm -hmm. um, now I was the example of failure. Uh, the woman around me, my 
uh, my neighbors, my aunties. I was the example of my cousins were not allowed to to hang out with me. My friends, who were my friends in the past, their parents didn't want their kids to to be my friends. So I was in a situation because you were a single mother. Because I was a single mother, a teen mother, a high school dropout. I mm -hmm. was everything that mm -hmm. that a, a a parent doesn't want their kids to be. Yeah. And yeah. They had no idea who you really were. No, no, or who I was going to become in the future. They had no idea. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's funny, interesting though, too, because you actually speak of that Erica as a different person. Yes, I had to realize that she's a different person because uh, there was a time where I felt that I was the same Erica. Like I couldn't see all the accomplishments that I had. I, 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 I was receiving a lot of recognition. I was invited to speak. Uh, when my graduation pictures went viral, uh, people will line up so that I could sign their books. And for a moment, I felt like the old Erica work, she didn't feel that she deserved all of that. But then I realized I have to separate them. I'm no longer her. She's a different person and I am a new person. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's why I, I refer to her as the... the her, yeah, I know. Well, you're, <laughs> you're still referring to her as yes. her, as, uh, yeah, a different person. But uh, I respect it. Thank you. I respect you. it. Yes. That's... You know, that's an amazing story. Um, just on a, you know, just questioning from a personal level, mm -hmm. like during that period of time, uh, was the father trying to get into his life? What does co-parenting look like? Like what's, what's happening during that period of time? During that period of time, he, I didn't receive any financial help from him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Were you seeking it? I, no, I wasn't. You didn't ask for it? I didn't, didn't ask for it. No, no, I that. didn't. I think I didn't receive any child support, any help. Any... Was that because you didn't know how to or you just Probably wanted to? Probably because I didn't know how to. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been through a yes. little bit of what you're saying and so yeah. I'm just curious. I think that he was a person, my baby's father, he was uh, a drug addictive. He was a person that didn't like to work. So even though that we were together, I was the one that was collecting cans so that I could recycle them and we could eat and I could mm. get the bus. He, I was the one that was providing financially. So he was a mm. person that would couldn't have not been able. Anyway. Yeah, I couldn't count on him. So I didn't even try to get child support because he wasn't even working. Mm -hmm. But then he got himself in trouble. He went to prison and okay. there was no association between me and him okay. while I was raising my child, my son. Yeah, he wasn't mm -hmm. trying to. He wasn't trying to be in his life anyway. No. He couldn't help or any of that. No, he wasn't trying. I get yeah. it. Okay, so now education. As yeah. we move forward um, in in uh, this time period, uh, you made the decision. Mr. Lee says you go to college. Yes. You say, okay, I'm going to do it. So where did you enroll and, and <laughs> how did that happen? Where, where did you go? I enroll in Miracosta Community College. Mm -hmm. That's where my son goes now. Oh, okay. So. I love Miracosta. Mm -hmm. When I, I remember when I started the first day of class in, in, in Miracosta College, when I walk into the campus, I felt so little. And for a moment, I felt the imposter syndrome. I was like, oh my gosh, Mr. Lee is such a nice person that he, what made him think that I could be a student here? Mm -hmm. When I took the placement test, my scores were very low that I had to take two non-credit non English classes and mm -hmm. two non-credit math classes. Mm. And for me, it was a little bit overwhelming because I was going through that situation of ending the abusive relationship. Sure. I was going through post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. Plus, I had a baby. I had to work full time. Be a full what kind of work? I was working in a chocolate factory. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I was There's packing. some happiness there, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was a uh, 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 work that required a lot of repetition. And when I was working at night, packing the boxes, mm. I I always I always like to ask questions. So I asked the person next to me, "Hey, for how long have you been working here?" And she said, 15 years." Yeah. And I was like, doing the same thing? And she was like, yeah, exactly the same thing. And we were packing the She'd boxes. She'd probably do it in her sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was like, wow, do I want to do that? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that day that I asked her that question, I was walking out of the factory and I went into the reception area and I stood there and I visualized myself there. So when I went to college during the day, I saw that as my, as my goal one day I'll be a receptionist. Mm -hmm. And I saw it as a dream and I said, if if you get a college degree, you'll get to be a receptionist. 
Um, so even though that I was feeling that I didn't belong there, even though that I was feeling imposter syndrome, I, I saw myself sitting in the reception area. You wanted and, to be a receptionist. Yes. That was the goal. Graduate college goal. and become a receptionist. Yes. You had yes. no idea that you could have been a receptionist <laughs> like right then. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that I could be a receptionist right mm -hmm. then. But uh, having that vision, having that goal was what kept me motivating and continuing mm -hmm. in going to college. But when I was in college, I met Candelaria Candy. She was my school counselor, and mm. that was the first time that I saw a Latina woman in a higher position. And okay. I was like, wow. Okay. So maybe I could be a school counselor. <laughs> okay. And now it became it became a, a, my goal to be like her because mm -hmm. she was a person that will encourage underrepresented students to continue with their education. Mm -hmm. And seeing her and seeing someone that looks like me made me think that I could also become a school counselor. You know what is interesting <laughs> yeah. to me about you, and, and I, I really like this. Um, I think it's a good trait that you mm -hmm. have. It, um, it goes back to when you had to sleep outside that night. Yes. Uh, it goes back to you in the, in the factory. Um, and then even this story right here with Candy, that you kind of have like this out of body perspective. Yeah. You're like, I see where that Erica is, but I want to, if I could do that, then I could transform that Erica into this Erica. Yes. Like you're, you're kind of seeing it from the outside looking in mm -hmm. and then it gives you your goals. That gives yes. you your energy, your motivation. It does. And something mm -hmm. that I always do is that I ask myself, what does it take for me to get there? Mm -hmm. And as soon as I ask myself that question, the answers start coming and then I start seeing myself and visualizing yeah. myself. Yeah. But it's interesting because first I wanted to be a receptionist, which yeah. eventually I, I did get a receptionist position. Okay. But then I wanted to be a school counselor. And the reason why I wanted to be a school counselor is because I wanted to encourage underrepresented sure. students to continue with their education. 100%. Uh, now I do that as a keynote speaker. I go and speak to underrepresented students. Yeah, I love it. Okay. A couple more things about the education and um, the degrees that you went and got, and then we're going to reveal and talk about what you're doing today. So yes. tell us a little bit what happened at Miracosta. How did you go? You know, what were the next steps? And then, you know, what what did you do in, in education? When I uh, when I graduated from Miracosta Community College, it was one of the happiest days of my life mm -hmm. because everything was going according to my plans. Mm -hmm. I was admitted at Cal State San Marcos, mm -hmm. and I was in my first semester at Cal State San Marcos. Mm -hmm when my son was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Mm. He was five years old, mm -hmm. but his speech level was of a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. He couldn't run. And all I remember is that I just wanted to know why. And so I asked the specialist, what causes cerebral palsy? He gave me many explanations, but as soon as he said brain injury during pregnancy, my world stopped. And that was the beginning of many months of depression. I got academically disqualified from Cal, from Cal State San Marcos in 2013. Mm. Mm -hmm. But a year and a half after, um, when I was getting my son ready for school, he asked me, Mommy, do you have a career already? Remember that every day you used to say that one day you were you going remember. to have a career. You promised. That, yeah, I promised him that <laughs> you were going to have a career, that we were going to buy a house, and that we were going to have a puppy. What happened, Mama? Mm -hmm. And that is the moment, that is the moment that I remember that I stood up, I gave him a hug and I told him, baby, mommy just took a break. Mm -hmm. I, it, was, it was one of the happiest days of my life because that was the first time that I heard my son speak in a long, clear sentence. I got so excited. Instead of going to work, I went to Cal State San Marcos and I asked them, what do I need to do so that I can become a student here again? It was not easy. It took me six years to get my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. But in 2017, I, I was selected to be the commencement speaker for my graduation ceremony. That's, <laughs> Thank you. that's beautiful. Thank you. you know, um, and I think there's, well, there's a number of lessons in there. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a number of lessons in there. But one of the lessons, for sure, when it comes to education, mm -hmm. when it comes to just maturity in general, um, it's okay to take a break. Yes. As yes. long as you understand what the goal is 
and you get back to it, right? Yes. And then also, it's okay for your education to take a longer time than expected. Yes, it's okay. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't all, everybody's not just four years and how, three years, you know, five years, no. whatever, you know, however long it takes. And I was really also appreciate, well, first of all, I just appreciate your honesty and sharing, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, you've been clear. It's just like, I wasn't the best person in the you know top of the class throughout. <laughs> no. But here I am speaking to my graduation class because uh, they didn't want to hear my story, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, your story is important. And then next thing you know, you're one of the most important people around, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, all of that is mm -hmm. special on top of the fact that um, I, I just love the story about your son remembering, he's speaking a clear sentence yeah. and uh, holding you accountable. Oh, and you're yes. like, okay, you want me to be good mommy? I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go do it. Yeah. Go for you. Thank you. I, I think that having a, well, in my case, being a mother and seeing my son, I always ask myself, how could I tell my son to follow his dreams or to believe in himself if I don't believe in myself and if I don't follow my dreams? Mm -hmm. For me, it was very important, the example that I was giving him. And in order for me to be that person that I wanted him to be, I had to become that person first. Sure. And that is the reason why every time that I wanted to give up, I will tell myself, he's watching you, he's watching you. Yeah, there you go mm -hmm. from the outside looking in again. <laughs> yeah. Outside looking in. You're outside of your body at all times. <laughs> I get this. I love this. Yeah. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jeff. And we're the hosts of I Like Beer, the podcast. Teachers by day, beer drinkers by night. We promote local breweries. We toast, roast, and pour one out for all things beer and life related. Come play beer or not a beer with us. Find us wherever you get your podcasts at I Like Beer, the podcast. Welcome to Velocity, the Vista Chamber podcast, where we dive deep into Vista's heartbeat. Join engaging conversations with local heroes, movers, shakers, and change makers shaping Vista's spirit. Tune in anytime, anywhere for a personalized connection to community stories. Velocity goes beyond info. It's a bridge connecting Vista's diverse voices. Hosted by me, Chamber CEO, Rachel Bell. Powered by the Vista Chamber of Commerce, your go-to for the heartbeat of Vista's vibrant community. Okay, so tell me more about um, uh, what degrees that you accomplished. What, what did you go get? I have an associate's degree in psychology, a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree in education and counseling, and I'm going for my PhD. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, so <laughs> on to the reveal, guys. I mean, you see, you see who we're talking to right now, Eric Alfaro. <laughs> and, and let's just, here's what we'll do for the reveal this time is we're just going to just roll through a few yes. of your awards and recognition. So okay. um, let's talk about the International Latino Book Award. Let's talk about the letter of recognition issued by Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States. A proclamation October 5th, Erica Alfaro's Day <laughs> by the County of San Diego. Whoa, right? Uh, Constituent of the Month issued by Mike Levin, U.S. Representative. Latina Leadership Award the City of Oceanside Certificate of Recognition by the U.S. Senate, 40 Under 40 issued by Business Street, and a mural by National City. So now we're talking about the author of Harvesting Dreams, Defying the Odds to Achieve the American Dream. This is <laughs> Erica Alfaro. Wow, thank you. <laughs> wow. Wow, thank you. What's it like? You drive by a mural? You, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you go by the mural and just yes. be like, hey. Because you, you're on the outside looking in. So you can just, I remember that Erica. This is this uh, Erica. I remember that old Erica. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. The mural. When, when I was told that they were going to paint a mural, a lot of good things were happening that year. Uh, one after the other, recognition, uh, the mural, uh, the uh, Latino award. And I remember telling my husband, hey, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be honest, he's like, why? I was like, I don't know. My picture was also put in a museum in San Francisco permanently. So everything happened in, in less than like two weeks. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I think something's going to happen to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. 
by now I see it. I see it in a way that the, all the recognitions that I receive, at, I, I see it as a proof that what I thought was impossible is possible. Mm -hmm. And I see it as an example for other students I, that, hey, if I was able to make it this far, mm -hmm. so can you. Yeah. Yeah, that, you keep thinking is, about the others as well. Yes. And so that's what's special about you, what's so important about Thank you. you. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. The um and then and then what is it, October fifth? October. Is that your 5th? day? Yes. <laughs> that's your day. Yes, that's my day. What do you do day? on that day every Ooh. year? Well, that was uh, mm -hmm. proclaimed last year in 2023, but this year in 2024 will be my first year. Oh, this will be the first time. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Well, I think I might I might throw a party with my family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll definitely. do something. I'll do something. <laughs> you definitely have to. You, you mentioned um, the picture in San Francisco, um, but and you also mentioned earlier the picture that went viral. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that picture, and we'll put that up. We're going to put that up as yes. well. But okay. But it's such a special picture and such a powerful image, mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit about it. Yes. Uh, in 2019, two weeks before my graduation ceremony, I wanted to surprise my mother. I put my cap and gown, I walk into her room, and I tell her, mamita, lo logramos, mommy, we didn't. We will be getting a master's degree. And my mother, who is a strong woman, who I never saw her crying when I was a child, in that moment she broke down crying. And she started saying, mija, all those hours working in the fields, all those sacrifices were worth it. And not only that, for the first time she told me, I'm proud of you. First time first time mm. she said i'm proud of you and i'm sorry for doubting you mm. all this time yeah. and then we hug each other and in that moment i decided that i wanted to do something special for my parents that i wanted to take my graduation picture in one of the fields where they work long hours yeah. to give us an education yeah. and that's how i decided to hire a photographer we took the pictures i posted the pictures on my social media and almost overnight it went viral, not only nation nationwide, but internationally. Wow. Yes. Such a powerful story. Yes, thank you. Beautiful, and it's a beautiful picture too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really well done. Um, yeah, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy <laughs> in just every way. Okay, so uh, which one of those, all of those awards that you have, which one's your favorite? My favorite? <laughs> uh, my favorite, I think it's uh, the, that's a great question. No one has ever asked me, <laughs> but I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking, I think it's the, the Toastmasters award the, from my club. Mm. I'm, I'm a member of Toastmasters Club sure. 47. Yeah. And when I joined Toastmasters, it was to confront my fear of public speaking. Yeah. And every year, I've been a member for seven years. Every year I will see uh, one member receiving that award. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, like that is so cool. Like I hope that one day I could get it. I can mm -hmm. get it. And last year I got it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that though, because um, you, you know, you're a keynote speaker, uh, yes. you know, a highly regarded keynote speaker and, and uh, highly sought after. Yeah. Um, what all goes into that? Like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there are people and businesses and nonprofit organizations or, schools or whatever mm -hmm. that wants you to come speak, but what actually goes into the business of being a keynote speaker? When I started sharing my story, mm -hmm. I didn't know that you could get paid for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the first time that I was asked, what are your speaking fees? Mm -hmm. My answer was, oh, no, 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 I do it for free <laughs> because it's my passion. <laughs> yeah, I've heard and, this story. Yeah. I've heard stories like this before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, I remember that the person that reached out to me, she said, oh, no, we have to pay you. We're required to pay speakers. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I was wondering, how much does a speaker get paid? I Google it and I was like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm going to maybe say $40 because I'll be uh, it will be during my lunch time. So maybe $40. And that will cover you for were my still gas. Working and I was okay. still trying to think about the, the speaking fee. Mm -hmm. And she replied and said, how does three hundred dollars sound? Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I was like, "Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah. believe it!" So that's how I started, and mm -hmm. that's that that's back in two thousand seventeen. Okay, I've been speaking for the last seven years. Now, how was how how nerve wracking was that though? I mean, now you're getting paid more than you expected, and you're getting up there and you have to speak. Like you have to deliver. I mean, you yes. feel. I mean, you probably put a lot of pressure on yourself. Oh you're yeah, like, I'm getting paid. For oh this. yeah, you know? so, yeah. <laughs> so, how was, what was the first one like? Well, 
I spoke for a corporation where they paid me $13,000 for a 30 minute speech, a virtual speech. Oh, okay. And I remember the pressure that I, I was putting on myself, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that sometimes I, I do put a lot of pressure on myself because I want to make sure that I, I deliver more than I get paid for. Mm -hmm. There has to be a lot of preparation mm -hmm. and you have to be very clear on your message. You have to also know who is the person that you will be speaking to, who's the audience. Mm -hmm. But besides that, there's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of negotiation, planning, the traveling, the, the planning like where I have to travel, where am I staying, what am I wearing, mm -hmm. what presentation I'll be showing, what what will be the speaking fee, what will be the contract, what will be the uh, the terms. There has to be a lot of negotiation, a lot of planning, and a lot of preparing. Yes. And you have to be willing to constantly train. A lot of people say, oh, I'm a good speaker. I'm, I'm already <laughs> a good speaker. But you don't go and just speak. <laughs> you have to really have a speech structure. You have to be prepared with your messaging. You have to constantly prepare yourself. What I do is that every Wednesday I go to my communication club. Uh, I'm always reading. Every day I read. Every day I try to learn uh, new things. And I study the place where I'll be speaking at. Yeah. That, that is behind the scenes, something that a lot of people don't see. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I want to talk even a, a little bit more seriously about your journey, about the... Um, just you know difficulty so after the fact you even after you you've got your degree and people are you know there's some businesses out there that want to hear you speak and all um even as a business person you're yes. still a, um, a woman of color and i'm just wondering how many of the besides family the people who tried to hold you down or the haters, discrimination, you know, th these kind of things. Do you feel that around you? Oh, yes, you? yes. Yeah. But uh, when my pictures went viral, 50% of the messages were negative, 50% of the messages were positive. Mm -hmm. But I decided to only focus on the positive messages. And as a keynote speaker, it, as of today, I haven't been able to, to find another Latina woman speaker speaking for universities. Uh, doing that as a business or as a full-time job, mm -hmm. I haven't been able to meet one. And I thought that that was my biggest disadvantage because being a keynote speaker in a field that is dominated by men, especially white men, made me feel a little bit intimidated and made me feel that I had to accept less. Mm. But now I decided to switch it and I realized that being a minority being a Latina woman and being maybe only one of the few Latina speakers is my biggest advantage. Yeah, it because increases if there's, your yeah, value. Yeah. Because it increases my value. If there's not too many uh, things on the market, there's really no competition. Mm -hmm. And that I, I should see it as, as my biggest advantage. And that's what I do. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, so, um, but now you also have taken that and become an entrepreneur. You're, you are actually teaching others, right? Yes, yes. Um, about how to become a, a keynote speaker and, and good speaker. So tell us more about that. Realizing that there are not many Latina speakers made me wonder why. And I, I realized that that's something that we don't learn in school. As Latinas, we are not outspoken. We... So what I decided to do is that I decided to, to create a program so that I could train other women or other men how to share their stories so that there could be more speakers. Mm -hmm. Because I'm usually hired to speak at 10 different events in a month or sometimes more. And I have to say no to many organizations because I cannot give two speeches in one day. You want to give the most, the, the highest quality to the yes. woman you're speaking to. Yes, and what I want to do is that I want to be able to refer one of the people that I train so that they could speak to the places that maybe they don't have the budget mm -hmm. to pay a speaker or they need a Latina woman speaker. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I want to do now. That, so that's that's how I decided to start Harvesting Dreams, yeah. my business where I train other women 
so that they can learn how to tell their stories. That's just smart business. Yes. That's a smart business plan. Okay, I also read something about a parent workshop. Mm -hmm. What's a parent workshop? For the parent workshop, I participate in parent workshops where uh, I collaborate with Mano a Mano Foundation and I share my story with the parents of Unified School Districts in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And the parent workshop is a workshop where parents learn how they can help their kids navigate the education system, mm -hmm. how they can uh, apply for scholarships, how they can uh, show their kids that it's possible for them to aspire for more than a high school diploma right. to go to college. Yeah. And that, that is the parent workshop. I love it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, so now you need to, it's just time to tell people uh, how they can find you. I'm so okay. glad that you got here. I'm so glad that, uh, well, shit, I'm just so glad to hear your story. Thank you. But I'm very uh, happy for you and, and what's coming next mm -hmm. because it's clearly almost kind of just getting started. Uh, yes. Even though you've been doing this for seven years, it seems like it's kind of just getting started. Oh, so yes. I'm looking forward to Thank the future you. for you and anything that we can do to help participate. Um, but please let the audience know how they can reach out to you, where they can find you, where they can hear you speak or how they can hire you to speak okay. or anything that you want to share. Please share. With oh, the yes. Of course. Uh, I can be found. My social media is Erica Alfaro, Instagram Alfaro Erica 47. Uh, you can find more about me on my website, ericaalfaro.com. And there you can see my speaking schedule as well. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> Man, you killed it. You shared. Uh, you got me excited. I'm all uh, emotional. I'm high-fiving. Uh, I'm tearing up. You. Like, it's all thank kind of you. stuff. So this was beautiful. And I'm sure that you get that with everybody that you speak to because you're an engaging speaker, very yeah. intelligent. I also love your perspective because you are kind of, you do have an outside looking in perspective. You see yeah. yourself even from the outside and seeing how you're being presented. Yeah. Um, you, you just have so many great qualities Yes. Um, and that just isn't just necessarily uh, as a Latina woman, but just because you are who you are mm -hmm. as a human being. Um, yeah. And I think everybody yes. needs to hear your story. Thank so you. Thank I look you. forward to future and current, you know, future expansion. Thank you. That. I appreciate that. And I, I really appreciate it. it. Doesn't matter how many times they tell me, it means a lot to me because it's like that extra energy that keeps me going, keep going. to know that. Uh, that our stories matter, that I, that I could make a difference in another person's life. And I thank you so much. I Absolutely. really enjoy being here. Absolutely. And at first I was like, how do you know all those accomplishments? And I was like, oh, I'll keep it right there. I was like, whoa. I got a fly on the wall. <laughs> but that's amazing. And also thank you for inspiring me because uh, seeing you doing it, seeing that it's very close to home, and that I can also do it, it inspires me to to also start my podcast and start interviewing other people. Let's do it. Yes, thank you. Let's do it. Thank I'm you. here for you 100%. So uh, you guys, you know how to reach us. Uh, same business, different day. Uh, you see us bi-weekly. We keep putting out great shows um, and, and talking to amazing people who have great stories to share. And they're all for you. These stories are for you. And so hopefully you guys soak some of that information in and use it for inspiration for yourself, or at least share with others. Please share, please like, please comment. We really could use that. It helps with the algorithm, it helps with our growth, and because we wanna to continue to do this going forward. So uh, uh, Instagram at SameBizPod, S-A-M-E-B-I-Z-P-O-D, um, Same Business Different Day on YouTube, uh, at A Different Day Radio. We've got a lot of great content for you and a lot more coming up. So uh, peace to you all, thanks. Thank you.